This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 27th day of March in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. Attorney General Anil Nandlal has issued a call on parliaments around the world to condemn Venezuela's flagrant violation of the provisional measures handed down by the International Court of Justice. Those measures were intended to maintain peace and stability in the Latin America and Caribbean region, as it adjudicates over the border case brought against Venezuela by Guyana. As he addressed the 148th Inter-Parliamentary Union Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland on Tuesday, the Attorney General explained that in breach of both the letter and spirit of the interim measures granted at the International Court and the December 2023 Argyle Declaration, the Venezuelan government recently enacted laws in its parliament to annex two-thirds of Ghana's sovereign territory. I appeal to each one of you to use the theme of this conference and the platform of your respective parliament to condemn the actions of Venezuela, to demand compliance with international law, and to call for diplomacy to be used as a bridge for peace and understanding. This is not a favor to Guyana. It is discharging a duty we owe to ourselves, and indeed the world, if we are to remain true to the founding principles of this great organization. Mr. Nandlal noted that a claim by Venezuela was finally and conclusively settled by arbitration in 1899, and it was not until the early 1960s when Guyana was about to gain independence from Great Britain that Venezuela made the outrageous claims that the arbitral award was unlawful. The Attorney General said in accordance with the provisions outlined in the 1966 Geneva Agreement, the controversy is now before the International Court for a final juridical settlement. However, Venezuela has so far refused to accept the court's jurisdiction or to be bound by any order of the court. Every major international organization in the Western Hemisphere has condemned Venezuela's action and have called upon Venezuela to respect the jurisdiction of the ICJ to comply with international law and to employ diplomacy in resolving this alleged dispute. These include the United Nations, the European Union, the Commonwealth, the Organization of American States, the CARICOM community, and the community of Latin American and Caribbean states. Many governments, including the United States, Canada, Great Britain, Brazil, and those of the Caribbean, have issued similar statements. Significantly, by virtue of an intervention broken by CARICOM and CELAC, the presidents of Venezuela and Guyana signed an accord in Argyle St. Vincent in December 2023, inter alia declaring not to take any steps to escalate this conflict but to resort to diplomacy and dialogue in resolving it. The Attorney General said in clear violation of the orders of the ICJ and the Argyle Declaration, Venezuela has attempted to annex Ghana's Essequibo region. And turning his attention to the war in Gaza and the breakdown of democracy in Venezuela, Mr. Nandlal said it was unfortunate that the conference failed to harness the energy and support needed to condemn the worst human rights tragedy in the world in Gaza and the lack of democracy in Venezuela. These horrendous events, although occurring at opposite sides of the globe, together manifest the deadly havoc that armed conflicts wreaks and the social disorder and human sufferings that the absence of democracy produces. More than 30,000 are dead in Gaza. Nearly 8 million refugees have fled Venezuela. The conference, which wrapped up today, was held under the theme Parliamentary Diplomacy, Building Bridges for Peace and Understanding. It has provided a platform for delegates to deliberate, exchange views and galvanize parliamentary action in keeping with that theme. The Speaker and Clerk of the National Assembly, the local government minister Sonia Parag, and opposition MP Don Hastings Williams were among the other members of the Guyana delegation at the parliamentary meeting in Geneva. More news coming up in just a moment. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. 
or advice on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Holiday spending put a dent in your cash. Top up your pockets in the cash splash promotion. Win over five million dollars, including over one million in our weekly draws. Just purchase any Busta Turbo. Fruta, cool kids are viva. Look for all the eight-digit code starting with seven eight six. Then visit Facebook or IG at Busta Guyana or Turbo underscore Caribbean for more details. In our search for sophistication and grace, the Super Stylistics team invites you to be part of something extraordinary. Mothers and daughters who possess aura and presence that transcend through time. Step forward and become part of the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Join our legacy as we redefine elegance for generations to come. The search for the epitome of timeless love begins now. Call 226-2825 or 626-0460 to secure your spot in the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Let's tell you now that the leader of the People's National Congress Reform, Aubrey Norton, is confident of his re-election as party leader when the party holds its next Congress. However, at a recent press conference, Mr. Norton said if the circumstances require, he would not be opposed to a consensus presidential candidate to lead the coalition into next year's elections. As it relates to a consensual candidate, any sensible politician never says never. Circumstances can change, and if circumstances change, you have to adopt. But as it's presently structured, um, I see uh, that we'll have a Congress, I'll be re-elected leader, and I'll be the presidential candidate. If the circumstances demand that we find an, another a consensual candidate, and I do believe that a, such a candidate is in the interest of the development of our party in Guyana, I will be dispos disposed to facilitate it, but I am not one who will ever say never. The People's National Congress reform is the largest party in the APNU. It is expected to provide the presidential candidate for any upcoming general elections, unless there is an agreement for an outside candidate. The PNC's long overdue biennial delegates congress is expected to take place before the end of August. New sources have learned the number of current party executives, including Roysdale Ford and Amanda Walton this year, are likely to challenge Norton for the top party position. The party will have its congress, the elections would be held, and I have no doubt that I will be re-elected as leader of the party. And generally, the leader of the party is the presidential candidate, first thing. According to Norton, he has used his time in office to rebuild the party and connect with the grassroots members of the PNC, although there have been complaints of him forcing the party into a divided state, owing to his lack of consultation with the executive on important matters. The PNC leader has also been accused of sidelining senior members of the party's executive, especially those who appear to be gearing up to challenge his leadership. Let's tell you now that in the wake of an increase in the number of attacks and robberies of Chinese-owned businesses in Guyana and the recent robbery and murder of a Chinese supermarket owner, the Chinese ambassador to Guyana recently met and held discussions with the top brass of the Guyana police force on the issue of security and the safety of Chinese citizens and their businesses in Guyana. During the Tuesday meeting, Chinese Ambassador Guai Haiyan offered appreciation to the Ghana Police Force for its rapid investigation of the recent murder case of a Chinese citizen, while hoping that the Ghana Police Force would take further practical measures to safeguard the safety of Chinese citizens and shops in the country. The Ambassador said Chinese citizens will have to increase precautions and take additional measures to protect themselves. We need to uh remind uh, them to, uh, to in increase the precautions, take some uh, protection measures. And uh, we, are, we are happy that there's a quick response from the police. Um, I have paid courtesy call to uh, 
Minister Ban and also our Commissioner Hicken. In a statement, the Chinese embassy said the acting police commissioner, Clifton Hicken, has indicated that additional protective measures will be adopted for Chinese citizens, especially Chinese stores. The two sides also had in-depth exchanges on further improving the safety and security of Chinese citizens in Guyana, the statement said. With scores of Chinese businesses opening up in Guyana over the past few years, many of them have become targets for bandits. The situation has become worrying for local police and the Chinese embassy, as there have been almost weekly attacks and robberies committed on Chinese-owned businesses. The North Rupununi village of Masara has fallen into deep mourning with the drowning deaths of three young girls from the community. Six-year-old Nia Jeffries, five-year-old Michelle Jeffries, and nine-year-old Alicia Doric lost their lives yesterday when they ventured into a razor grass pond in the village to swim but drowned. A police statement said the three young children left their parents' homes unknowing to the parents and headed to the small pond in the community. A search was initiated by family members after the girls were discovered missing from their homes. That search ended when their young lifeless bodies were found floating in the water at the pond. The bodies were retrieved and the police at the NI station were contacted. An investigation is on the way in the area. The police said the three bodies have since been transferred to the Lethem Regional Hospital. Mobile One is more than oil. It's many oils. It transforms at the molecular level. When cold, it's thicker than honey. When hot, it's thinner than water. Mobile One adapts and readapts to last longer. 16,000 kilometers between oil changes. That's your engine evolved. Salgan is the authorized distributor of mobile lubricants. At the most critical life-changing moments, the National Insurance Scheme is here to ensure that your needs are covered. Access reimbursement for medical expenses for various aspects of your medical care. We know that eye care is of utmost importance. Receive assistance with our spectacle care voucher. Visiting the dentist? Dental care is also covered under our sickness benefit services. Offset the funeral expenses of a loved one with costs covered by our funeral benefits. National Insurance Scheme. We're there every step of the way. Look at the breathtaking beauty of the Essequibo, from its pristine rivers to its abundant resources. It's a treasure that belongs to Guyana, and we ask Venezuela to respect the rule of international law. Our commitment to this land is not just about ownership. It's about preserving its beauty and resources for our people and future generations. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela was settled internationally as full, perfect and final in 1899. Essequibo belongs to Guyana. Residents in several parts of the country have been going to sleep and waking up to smoky conditions in their communities. And the Environmental Protection Agency today reported that those conditions are being caused by several fires across eight of the ten administrative regions of Guyana. 
In a statement, the EPA said there are currently a number of fires within regions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, noting that the fires have been caused by a mixture of spontaneous combustion and possibly human-induced. The EPA said it is investigating the situation and added that it has noted a significant increase in fires being reported by residents from affected communities and detected via satellite imagery. The agency is advising residents and communities within the affected regions to remain vigilant and take all necessary precautions to ensure personal safety and reduce the exposure to smoke which could potentially cause a dry cough, throat and eye irritation. Children, the elderly and persons with underlying respiratory or cardiovascular illnesses are most vulnerable, the EPA said. Residents within the affected areas are also being advised to desist from lighting fires to burn garbage or vegetation. The general public is also being advised to report any sighting of fires to the Ghana Fire Service or the Civil Defense Commission and adhere to any advisory being issued by the local authorities. On the west of Marara this morning, drivers were forced to park their cars for more than an hour along the roadsides as visibility was reduced because of the thick heavy smoke that was moving across the area. On the east bank of the Marara and the east coast of the Marara, many persons complained of waking up to a blanket of smoke in their homes. The Ministry of Health has confirmed an outbreak of the chicken pox virus at the Lusignan prison and has indicated that it is working closely with the prison service to address the situation. In a statement, the Health Ministry assured prisoners, their families and staff members at the prison that all precautions and all necessary actions are being taken to ensure no further spread of chickenpox occurs at the jailhouse. The ministry said the outbreak has affected 53 prisoners and it is suspected that the spread of the infection was started by a prisoner, staff member or a visitor. According to the Health Ministry, the medical and surveillance teams are presently conducting contact tracing to identify the source of the infection. It explained that from the earliest complaints by prisoners about unusual itching, screening was conducted by the medical team assigned to the Lusignan prison. And once the first cases were confirmed, care was taken to separate the affected prisoners from the prisoners with no symptoms. Those who were diagnosed with chicken pox were treated with various medications, while other prisoners and staff members not affected were vaccinated. The Ministry of Health said its medical teams will continue to monitor the situation and ensure that the outbreak is halted, noting that the outbreak appears to be under control at the moment. But measures have been taken also to evaluate staff members who might have been exposed. The issue about the outbreak was first raised by the opposition APNU-AFC with a call for urgent action to be taken to address the outbreak. The health ministry has denied that the matter was not being taken seriously. Inter Energy, an energy company based in the Dominican Republic, said it is prepared to help the Ghana Power and Light Company better manage its electrical systems. The chairman of Inter Energy, Rolando Gonzalez Bonser, while addressing the United Caribbean Forum at the Ardachan Conference Center yesterday, said a memorandum of understanding has been signed to facilitate the transfer of knowledge with GPL. We believe we can bring to Guiana Power and by some of the knowledge that we gained over the years and help them uh, manage their system, their electric system, in a better way, especially once the 300 megawatts of new generation comes online and the future demands that they will have uh, in their growth. Uh, the MOU between Inter Energy and GPL was signed back in January. Inter Energy prides itself as a key player in power generation, transmission, distribution, and electric mobility in Latin America and the Caribbean, with operations in the Dominican Republic, Panama, Jamaica, Chile, and Uruguay. In a statement issued following the signing of the MOU in January, the company said it will be pooling its expertise with that of GPL to fortify Ghana's energy infrastructure. It said the strategic partnership aims to deliver reliable, affordable and quality energy services to all corners of the country, thereby supporting Guyana's sustainable development goals. 
Under the agreement, both companies intend to engage in discussions to explore opportunities and identify potential areas for collaboration and development of GPL through the implementation of inter-energy expertise and its know-how in electricity generation, transmission and distribution and in the management of electricity systems and assets. In our search for sophistication and grace, the Super Stylistics team invites you to be part of something extraordinary. Mothers and daughters who possess aura and presence that transcend through time. Step forward and become part of the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Join our legacy as we redefine elegance for generations to come. The search for the epitome of timeless love begins now. Call 226-2825 or 626-0460 to secure your spot in the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming and we're all part of it. Guyoil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Gaia's profit goes back to building schools, roads, another important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Gaia Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Holiday spending put a dent in your cash. Top up your pockets in the cash splash promotion. Win over five million dollars, including over one million in our weekly draws. Just purchase any Buster, Turbo, Fruta, Cool Kids, or Viva. Look for all the eight-digit code starting with seven eight six. Then visit Facebook or IG at Buster Guyana or Turbo underscore Caribbean for more details. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Swetlana Marshall in the region. More than two weeks after Haiti's Prime Minister resigned following a surge of violence in Port-au-Prince, details of a presidential transitional council have still not been revealed, the BBC said in a report. One of the challenges this council will have to face is the illegal trafficking of guns, which has powered the gangs which have taken over. The escalation in violence has sparked an exodus from the capital. Among those leaving is 14-year-old David Charles, whose father Israel is nervous with excitement as he waits for his son's bus to arrive. David has managed to escape Port-au-Prince, a city now torn apart by armed gangs and political chaos. Most of the violence gripping Haiti is centered in the capital. The UN estimates 80% of it now controlled by gangs. For a country that does not manufacture weapons, a UN report in January found every type of gun was flooding Port-au-Prince, including high-powered rifles such as AK-47s, 9mm pistols, sniper rifles, and machine guns. The weapons are fueling the staggering surge in Haiti's gang-related violence. There is no exact number of how many traffic firearms are currently in Haiti. The UN report said some estimates put it at half a million legal and illegal weapons in Haiti as of 2020. It reported that guns and ammunition were being smuggled in from land, air and sea from U.S. states such as Florida, Texas and Georgia.
Brazil and France on Tuesday launched an investment program to protect the Brazilian and Guyanese Amazon rainforests, involving 1 billion euros in private and public funds over the next four years. The announcement was made during French President Emmanuel Macron's three-day visit to the South American country, where he landed on Tuesday in Belém, near the mouth of the Amazon, and was met by Brazil's President Luiz Lula da Silva. Their pledge to work together to stop deforestation in the Amazon by 2030 to contribute to slowing global warming comes two years before Brazil hosts the COP30 climate negotiations talks in Belém in 2025. According to a statement issued, the presidents expressed their commitment to the conservation, restoration and sustainable management of the world's tropical forests and agreed to work on an ambitious agenda, including developing developing innovative financial instruments, market mechanisms, and payments for environmental services. And finally tonight, international news. Canada's population touched a record high of 40.77 million in 2023, largely driven by temporary immigration, Statistics Canada said on Wednesday. The country added 1.27 million people in 2023, up 3.2% from the previous year, marking the highest growth since 1957. Reuters in a report said the influx of immigrants has been blamed for a housing shortage that has pushed up house prices and sent affordability to new lows, hurting Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's approval ratings. The population growth has also pulled down the country's gross domestic product per capita, figures as seen in the last quarter, as well as productivity levels, economists and the Bank of Canada said. In 2023, the vast majority, 97.6% of Canada's population, came from international migration, both permanent and temporary immigration, and the remaining portion, 2.4%, came from natural increase, Statscan said in a statement. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe. <laughs>